Hi guys, it's Aoife from Fred Weezy Died Laughing and today I wanted to do a special video and talk about my all-time favourite book and that is The Bronze Horseman by Paulina Simons. Um, so the first book in this, this is a trilogy, but the first book is The Bronze Horseman by Paulina Simons. Then the second book is Tatia and Alexander and the third book here is The Summer Garden. And as you can see, these are all pretty lengthy, thick books, um, but they are absolutely amazing and I just adore this series. I have done since... I read it first. I think the first time I read Bronze Horseman, I'm not 100% sure, but I think I think I was about 14 when I first read it and ever since that moment, I remember I remember reading it and I remember finishing it and being like I just I just had my breath taken away. Um I just thought it was the most beautiful story I'd ever read. I wanted to read more and more and more. Um at the time, I didn't realize that it was actually a trilogy. Like I thought that was it and I was devastated because I wanted more. Um and then a few years later, I did realize that it was a trilogy and I managed to read the other books, reread the Bronze Horseman again. Um and then a few years later, um when I was had my own income and could buy my own books and stuff, I managed to get um the second two um on Amazon um for second. I think they secondhand books on Amazon and I bought this one originally because I could find this one in the stores I just couldn't find these ones anywhere um, and I reread them all again um, and most recently I reread The Bronze Horseman in November during my rereadathon um, and I enjoyed it just as much as I did the first the second and the third time I read it it is always a five star read for me um, and I'm going to I'm planning on reading the next two really really soon I think I might pick up Tatiana and Ale Alexander within the next few weeks and um, because I've been thinking about it a lot and I really want to continue on with this story. So I just wanted to kind of do this video just to talk about my love for this book. Um, I just wanted to start off by saying not every book is for every person. I do understand a lot of the criticism towards this book and um, I do understand it but it doesn't change my love for this book. I do think that if um, this book was being published now this book is it was published in 2010 um, but like you can see this is a thick book it is a dense book, it is a lot of facts and a lot of a lot of stuff went in, like a lot of research went into this book, you can tell. Um, so I would presume that it took a few years to write this book. Um, so I would say it maybe it's probably 20 years old, I would think, though I don't know how long Paulina Simons um, spent writing it. But I do believe that there are some things in this book that would be changed today with the way we are more critical readers today um, and we spot certain things better um, and you know we're able to critique things a lot more openly and a lot more publicly um, these days and I do think that if this was being um, edited and published today there would be things that um, would be taken out, there would be things that were rephrased, uh, stuff like that. So I do understand that, I want to say that straight off, I do get it, but this isn't about that, this is my love for the book, why this book is so special to me, um, and I just want to top it all the reasons why I love this book. So the first thing I want to talk about is just the Russian setting of this book. As you can tell, this book is set in um, Leningrad in Russia, just at the outbreak of World War II. Um, and we first meet our main character, Tatiana, um, just as her parents are panicking um, because World War II, war against Germany, has just basically been... Um, announced and they are worried about their son uh, Pasha who is Tatiana's twin brother and they are rushing around to send him off to a summer camp to keep him safe and um, from being conscripted and um, we meet Tatiana then and this is one of the reasons I love Tatiana so much is that when this panic breaks out and everyone is panicking and you know running around like you know like chickens without their heads and Tatiana is told go to the store um, you know buy food we, we might need food we might need to stock up and she's like yes yes okay and then they give her the money and she ends up reading she ends up like having a nap uh reading a little bit of her book then she puts on her best summer dress which is this kind of dress with like flowers on it and she goes strolling around she's going to go to the bus store or to the bus the bus store she's going to go to the bus um and she ends up eating ice cream at this bus stop and this is where alexander our other main character sees her for the first time, this girl, in the middle of this panic-stricken city, sitting at a bus stop, eating an ice cream with just utter delight and calm. Um, and that's kind of the moment he falls in love with her for the first time, just this beautiful image of this young girl. She's about 17, I think. Um, and yeah, I think that like that is one of those things that struck me about this book. I just think it's such a beautiful image. Um, and I'll get back to the Russia thing because that's what I was talking about. But this is set in Russia. It is set in a very 
tumultuous time in Russian history. Um, obviously there is Stalin, there is communism. Nina Simons knows Russia, she knows how to write Russia. She was actually born in Leningrad in the USSR um, in 1963 I think it was, I think I read. So she knows Russia, she grew up in Russia for 10 years. She didn't move over to the United States until she was 10. She didn't know English when she moved over to the United States so she had to spend a long time learning English um, before she was going to school and stuff over there. Um, and so like I feel like when I'm reading this story I feel like it's very very authentic it's very very authentically Russian the Russian culture we're immersed in the Russian culture even from like the type of food they um they are eating the type and nicknames they give each other which is one of the, the things I love about this book they all have little like nickname nicknames like he's Tatia her name's Tatiana but she could be Tatia uh, Tatiasha like there's just all these different names um for like just these pet names and nicknames and I just love that um and it's just one yeah it's just one of those little things that like really endear me to this story I just really really love that um but yeah the Russian culture is just so authentic in this book it is so real um obviously if Paulina Simons I'm presuming Paulina Simons did have family that grew up um around this time and I say she took a lot of that and put it into the book um while also doing other research I would presume um but you can definitely tell that you know this this is real like this is a real Russian Russian setting book um and yeah it's just amazing one of these things is also russia in world war ii i feel like we get a lot of books um set in the uk in world war ii we get a lot of books with americans in world war ii we get a few in france and um, i haven't read a whole lot in france but there are a lot of set in france and um, i do love a story a world war ii story set in france we do get a few in germany but we don't get a whole load of books set in russia in world war ii um, and in such a particular time frame because this really really focuses on the first half of this book very much focuses on the siege of Leningrad um, where thousands of people died I think thousands maybe it was hundreds but I'm thinking it might have been thousands of people died from starvation um, and just from the elements they didn't have any food they didn't have any you know anything really to protect themselves and um, from nature and they were just dying on the street people were dying on the streets all the time and um, people were practically like eating dogs and cats and rats and everything to survive um, and it is told truthfully in this book we can tell there are some really really terrible scenes in this book where we're seeing the desperation of humans when they are in this kind of situation and um, Tatiana ends up you know she is the one that is waiting for the bread and um, in the morning she's getting up she's walking when she can hardly even she can hardly even walk, like see in front of her, and she's walking slowly, slowly, slowly. Something that could take, take her normally 15 minutes would take her an hour because she wouldn't have any strength um, to go to the store. You know, none of her family would even be able to get up out of bed, but she would get up and go to get their bread, which most of the time ended up being made out of like sawdust and water and stuff like that. Like it was, it was terrible, terrible food that they were getting. But I just even things about like the Red Army and stuff like I have never read anything like that anywhere else and um, except for this book and things that we are learning from Alexander about the war and his time as a soldier in the Red Army and yes you're just getting a very great look at Russia World War Two um, and I think if people are really really interested in World War Two uh, and particularly Russian World War Two they should check this book out even for the fact that it is set in World War Two like you don't even have to mind the rest of the story if you want to see a really great like take of, on Russia in World War Two. I would say check out this book. I, As I said before I do love the characters in this book. I have loved watching them grow and struggle and prosper throughout the first, th throughout all the three books in this series and um, particularly like you see the first one you see Tatiana when we first meet her she is this little innocent naive 17 year old and we see her grow into a young woman. We see her grow and end up you know surpassing all of her family's thoughts about her they always thought that she was the weak one and the silly one and she ends up being the one holding them up and really being the one that like keeps them alive for as long as she can and um, she's the one as I said that gets up in the morning and goes to the store to get the bread the rationed bread and um, when everyone else is kind of just lying there and waiting to die she's the one that is really keeping them together um, and we see it again, we see her come back again and again and again from terrible things and we see her grow in strength and confidence and skills um, all the time within this first book. And then we see her and Tatiana and Alexander in a completely new situation she has never been in. She is learning everything from scratch. She is a stranger in a strange land and she, she just 
is amazing. The stuff that she does in this book and the stuff she learns and the way she survives is just amazing. And again, in the summer garden, between her and Alexander, the two of them have to work together to really, really like kind of grow together and learn about each other again and just keep something alive basically that for a while the two of them didn't know was dead or not um, and we just see her as I said we see her grow from a girl to an absolutely wonderful young woman um, and you just almost feel proud of her because you're like watching her all the time and seeing her struggles and you're just like cheering her on and I just love seeing that and being able to grow with these characters and keeping them in my heart and just seeing everything that they've been through and seeing her being rewarded for all the good things she has done in a world of bad. Um, I love it. And again with Alexander, Alexander is someone with a lot of secrets and obviously I'm not good, I don't want to spoil anything but he has a lot of secrets. He has been living in the dark for a very very long time. He's been very much alone for a very very long time. Um, and when Tatiana comes along he suddenly finds someone that is his heart and he never thought he would get that ever. Um, and he suddenly has someone that he can share things with and share burdens with. Um, and we see him grow in that, that he is finally able to release this um, this burden on himself and finally you know, split that burden in half. Um, and even though he wants to protect her always, she is strong enough, as I said, she grows and grows and grows and becomes strong enough that a lot of the time she doesn't need his protection even when he insists on giving it to her. Um, she ends up protecting him a lot of the time as well and she ends up saving his life more like as many times as he saves hers it's kind of like this two way they both save each other's lives over and over and over again um, and it is a really beautiful thing to see this love and this trust between them is wonderful and I love it um, now don't get me wrong this is a very angsty book and um, because there's a very for very much of the like the first half of the book they cannot be together even though they are so much in love with each other they can hardly stay away from each other but they can't be together um, and that is what I'm going to come to the next point which is family and the love of family in this book and um, Tatiana obviously is the baby of her family but she also kind of looks after all her family as I said before um, and family is a very very big part of her life um, and it is one of the reasons why she can't be with Alexander because being with Alexander would hurt someone else in her family and she won't do that you see her struggle so much because she loves Alexander so much and she can't be with him yet the love for her family is stronger um, even though he is practically becoming her family as well and um, just not in the kind of way that she would want and more about Alexander's family and what they mean to him and when they eventually start creating their own family and yeah it's just wonderful and it's just one of those ones that you want them to just grow old together and have loads of kids and yeah it's just it's just one of those wonderful things because you know they could make a really really lovely family together and as I've said I know this book is very angsty it is extremely angsty and normally angsty annoys me but for some reason with this book it doesn't because there's so much about it that makes sense of why they won't be together and then eventually like there's all these sort of things about why it takes a while for them to eventually get together however I wouldn't always say that I agree with everything that is said in this book and more so maybe because because I love this book so much I really I've really delved into the characters um, in this book and I've really read between the lines and I've really I've really studied these characters and I've really like when I read it, I don't just read it, I drink the story in and I drink the characters in and I drink their feelings for each other in um, and that is how I read this book. Where the way this book is written, I think it could be written in a better way. There's certain passages in this book that could definitely be written in better ways and um, I do think if it was being published today, it would be rewritten in different ways but it's not. This book is 17 years old, publishing age, probably older in terms of when it was written um, and back then people, we, did, we didn't quite, I don't think the publishing world and readers didn't quite see things the way we see them today. Um, and that is a good thing, that is a good thing. That being said, I'm never going to let anything stop me from loving this book because this book is part of me, it's part of my reading heart um, and I love it so much um, and as I said, I love it enough, I love it but I do under, I'm not loving, I'm not being blind about it, I'm not being blind about it, I do understand there, that there are issues with it but I still love it. I love this book and I don't think anybody should ever be afraid of reading a book. I think if you want to try out a book, um, you should read it and if you want to read it 
just to go into it critically and see if you can spot things that others have or if you maybe read things and end up thinking a different way than someone else has then that is perfectly fine we are a world of readers we read everything just because one person doesn't like a book doesn't mean that you're not going to like it if one person likes a big book that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to like it you could get this book recommendation from me because I love it and you could end up hating the book and that's okay because that's your personal opinion someone else could really 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 dislike this book but I love it and that's okay too so please let me know if you, what you think about this book if you're going to read it if you have read it if you love Tatiana and Shura just as much as I do thank you guys so much for watching this video and um, I will see you guys again next time bye